My name is Rigo Van Housen. I'm a father of three lovely kids, Noah, Chloe, and Boaz. My wife, Lotta, and we all together are a beautiful family. I'm just like everyone else, a normal family man working hard. But besides that, I'm working to become the best natural bodybuilder in the world. Trained for 18 years now, and we are working now towards a competition. The Dutch Championships, the European Championships, all in the world of natural bodybuilding. It has been eight years since I have stepped on stage. And this time, it's going to be different. I'm Lotte, I am the wife of Rico and the mother of his three children. We met in the street where we live now and the first time when I saw him it was a, like a really big guy and I thought whoa and three months later we fell in love. Being a natural bodybuilder is nothing more than just a human being who is training a lot and is taking care of his nutrition. However, we can eat like a normal human being. Also, I eat my pizzas. Also, I eat the lovely cookies. But at the same time, I make sure I'm also eating the good stuff. It's about having a great balance in between those two. And this is where you find longevity and where you can do this sport for a whole lifetime. All right, Sebastian so Waldhuis, the champ. It's been a long time since uh, we have uh, been working since uh, the show, a um, couple of years now. So uh, let's see, because you've not trained consistently uh, over the years, of course, becoming a dad, becoming a little bit of a dad bot. But let's see what we need to improve on. From last time we uh, went to the World Championships, um, we can see basically that, you know, from a couple of weeks out, you had much more volume than on show days, so that's what we are going to improve next time. From this point on, what I want you to have is a little bit more focus, as I can see to the older pictures, to the upper chest. Uh, we need to get that back because you've not trained for a long time. Um, so we need to get, uh, we need that uh, popping more. As well as for the back, we want to create more lats, pretty much theories and to create a physique that uh, we really try to improve for next season. Right, Sebastian, this is the job, the task that we are going to improve. Let's get it done, folks. When I uh, was in a relationship with Rico and I came into his family, I knew the first day that it was no option to use drugs. He has a father who is a big sportman, training a lot, and his mother also, and they are really against uh, the drugs. So for Rico, it's normal that he cannot use drugs. My name is Cliff Wilson. I'm from the United States near Chicago, Illinois. I'm a full-time bodybuilding prep coach for the last 13 years. Over the last 13 years, my clients have amassed over 160 pro cards, uh, over 100 professional titles, and 17 world champions. Why? Why are you not going to school? No, right? Oh, that's it.
Natural bodybuilding and physique development is a long process. Uh, it has timelines that are very different from the enhanced side of the sport. Natural bodybuilding, when you talk about achieving goals within the natural realm, I mean, we're talking a decades long process. Uh, oftentimes, I hear people talk about wanting to make physique progress naturally and they think it's going to take them six months when really you need to be looking at six to ten years. It is an incredibly challenging endeavor, but in my opinion, that's what makes it so special is because you can't dip your toe into this realm uh, lightly. You have, to, you have to dive all the way in and be in it for a long time. A daily life with Rico without competitions is just a normal life. He is always eating with us, with the children. Uh, no, there's no, there, there's no difference. Can we do this so? Pop, 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 pop. We are not scared. We are not. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, come on, come on. What are you eating? Toast. Yummy. The human body is an interesting piece. In order to structurally change it, you have to think about it very strategically. And you have to see it as an artist. It's like Michelangelo said, I saw the angel in the marble and carved until I set him free. You need to have the patience. You need to have a certain ability to wait for results to happen. And this is the reason why natural bodybuilding to me is a way how warriors it will do. <laughs> when it comes to get into your best shape ever, you are getting into the low single digit body fat. This means having a body fat percentage at the very minimum of 3% to 4%. This is very hard to achieve on a natural way. So it takes a lot of time. Flinter dun. Okay. Okay, so Rico, it's 14% uh, body fat. 14? 14. 14. 14. 14. Okay, that's uh, <laughs> still high, but uh, we can work on that. We have time enough. That's the reason why a natural bodybuilder, his contest prep takes around seven to eight months instead of three months that you usually see. What are the things that I see in people that drive them to take on this sort of endeavor? Uh, the first thing is patience. Um, as I said, you're dealing with, you know, 10 year, 20 year timelines to be the best you can be in this sport. So people that are impatient usually are not going to be driven to this sport, or at least they won't last long once they're in it. Um, there's a lot of other things too that lead to success and, uh, longevity in the sport and those are things like a meticulous nature and overall just someone who's self-motivated those are some of the most um the key factors to people that tend to make it all the way in the sport
the moment when you're starting a contest preparation, everything changes. From day one, you have a tunnel vision. There is now a dot on the horizon, a goal to be achieved. And that means that there will be no trainings missed and every single meal needs to be tracked. My previous client, so um, yeah, that was the previous brand that I had. Cool. Good to see you. Good to see you. The main difference between the off season and the contest preparation, in terms of training, there's a lot of change. You still do the trainings, you're still moving weights. You're not making a lot of changes to the training program itself. However, for the nutrition, things start to change. You start to eat much, much lower foods. You start to eat much, much fewer foods. And you have to deal with the moments where you are getting hungry. Besides eating less, it's also being about strict. It's also about everything needs to be tracked. There is no single piece of food or drink that gets in my mouth untracked. Everything needs to be managed. Everything needs to be precise. And this is where you have to be perfect. There's only one shot at the stage. There's only one opportunity. You have to do it right. I am really okay that he's putting a lot of time into his sport because um, I knew it from the beginning that this is his life, a big, a, a big thing of his life. And he also told me before we were together that this was his thing and I have to let him do that. During a contest prep, you have the ability to eat whatever you want, but you have to track it. Now, when times are there that you need to be flexible, then you still have options in any restaurant or grocery store you're in. And in this case, it's easy to have, for example, a steak because it's high in protein, high in fat, easy to track. And this is the way how you still can live life like a human being and do this very thing, contest prep. When I first met Rico, I remember looking at his photos and his potential was immediately, it immediately st stood out to me. Um, you could see that he had great structure, good muscle mass, good conditioning. Um, all of the framework was there. All of the, the, the gifts were there. It's just a matter of realizing that potential. My plan for Rico in this prep is really to um, diet him down because in his previous shows, he appeared to get very lean, um, but I believe that some of this came at the expense of some muscle mass. And so my plan was to diet him down to the conditioning that he had achieved and probably even more than he had achieved in the past, but to do so while preserving more muscle mass. To live life with Rico during uh, competitions was also very easy. We have three children. Uh, this is the first time that he is having a competition uh, with his family and with me. For all of us, it was a different way to live. But I think he was really like the same guy as before the competition. Sometimes he was a little bit tired in the evening, but and he will train um, during our dinner time because uh, otherwise he has to look to the food of the children. But um, no, he was always there. It was like pretty like the same.
Now, every single time you are putting yourself through a journey like this, becoming the most shredded man of planet Earth. It is important that on these very moments, you are capturing these moments. You can see what progress you have made along the years. Natural bodybuilding is something that takes a lot of time. That you're seeing now for all the years training, and you can definitely see that now when squeezing the muscle. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, we're gonna compare the pictures. Huh? It's my main cameraman. Always. In eight years, we have gained like three kilos. For a lot of people, it's not a lot, but you know, if you take three kilogram chicken breasts alongside each other, slap it on your body, then it's a big difference. But the muscle maturity is what you really see. Uh, more developed muscles, more older muscles, and now, as I always say, you are, in the beginning, you're making the diamonds, and once the years pass along, you train them, and you, you dice them, you make them nice. And that's really what you're going to see. So I'm very curious to the pictures. Let's see. Emotions, things like this. All right. You know, um, with shirt, without shirt. What kind of usage is going to be? The usage is going to be, you know, um, video thumbnails. It's going to be stationary things for graphic design. Things like that. All right. All right? Like you, you are building the diamonds in the beginning and then you are sharpening them and they become more beautiful. And with having these photo shoots, with the main cameraman. You can see the changes along the years and have a portfolio of photos where you can see change happen. In the long off season, it's very hard to see where change is actually happening. And with these photos, you can see it clearly what has improved and what hasn't, which prepares the next year's plan. Yeah. Looks amazing. Thanks. Much bigger than I was uh, in 2015, Frank. Yes. Eight years exactly. it has been. A lot has changed. All right, Frank, it's a wrap. Nice. Thanks again, my man. You're welcome. Yes, I'm uh, very curious to the comparison photos that we're going to make. And uh, I know it's going to be amazing, as of course. Let's go. Earlier on in the start of our process together, um, Rico probably thought I was crazy. What I mean by that is that generally, most of the muscle mass, the lean tissue losses that occur during a contest prep will occur in the final phases of prep. This is when body fat levels get low, and the body tends to be knocked off of homeostasis to a much greater degree. And so that's where the real danger of lean tissue loss comes in. Because of that, my original plan was to uh, have Rico lose body fat at a significantly accelerated rate in the earlier stages of prep. And so Rico probably thought I was crazy because we're, we were about like 25 weeks out from show day and I'm pushing fat loss really hard. And I know Rico, there were times when he was probably like, oh God, slow down, please. <laughs> um, but I, gen I genuinely think that um, pushing hard at 25 weeks out, uh, first off, nobody else does that. So that's where you can separate yourself from the pack. Um, the other thing that does is that it affords you the ability to push fast, get lean early, and then to drop those final six, seven, eight pounds, go very slowly and preserve lean tissue. Uh, so that was one of my uh, strategies that I wanted to employ this time uh, compared to what he had done in the past is push really hard out of the gate uh, in the contest prep and then back off at the end so that um, we can preserve that lean mass. Yep, Reese's Cups for the pre-stage pump. Now there's a reason why I picked Cliff Wilson as the coach. I knew him from before, a couple years ago we were a judge right next to each other and I already knew him for his very specific methods where 
people had to eat up to like even 1500 grams of carbohydrates. That's a lot. Now I knew also that he would be doing some kind of a protocol with me and indeed he did. You need a proper cut of the steak which consists not of too much fat but cook around steak, 12 grams of fat, 12 grams of fat, this is it. Let's see, so 8.1 grams per 100 grams, yeah we can have this. So Antwerco is going to be, this is one kilogram. Van Pachella. No way, no way. See the macros of the chicken filet. High protein, low fats, that's going to be. Two kilograms for 10 euros and 50 cents. Damn, you don't even gonna get that in the grocery store, bro. The thing that I didn't saw happening was he having me to drink at the very least 9 to 11 liters of water to wash out water retention to make sure every single muscle cell is fully hydrated and i would say this was the hardest part of the whole peak week drinking that amount of water it was crazy I have gotten to be known for peaking people. I think this started earlier on in my career when I was just doing things differently that other people hadn't done. When I first started coaching, people weren't drinking water before their shows. They would dehydrate themselves for days. They wouldn't consume any carbohydrates. And I changed a lot of that when I first came in. I started having people eat a lot of carbohydrates and drinking a lot of water. And I started manipulating sodium and potassium. And over the course of my career, doing a lot of these things that were outside of the box kind of built a reputation for peaking people. Hey Cliff, what's up coach? Um, I will eat my meal right now and then uh, after that I will send you the, the photos for the last uh, view and on the shape and uh, we'll see what we're going to do with the nutrition. So let's get it done, game time. So my initial plan of attack is to plan on having him come in leaner and fuller than he did before, but not push conditioning to the extreme because I don't want to sacrifice that lean tissue. In terms of peaking protocol, I do intend to have a pretty aggressive carbohydrate load approach because he does seem to tolerate food increases really well. At least for the first show, that will be my plan. And then depending on how his body responds at that first show, then we'll make judgment calls at the following shows. Besides my normal work and uh, the work that I put in the gym, the nutrition, the natural bodybuilding, I'm also at the same time an online coach to many, many people around the world. Jeroen is one of them. He is a dad of four children. He came to me to just lose weight. The moment that he was achieving his new desired body, he said to me, Rico, is it possible to do a show? And I said to him, yes, of course that's possible, but let's do contest prep together. And so I took Jeroen in this process and come with me in this contest preparation together and step on stage yes. yeah. for him the very first time. I think being uh, natural is a lot better than using the drugs, of course. I think everybody thinks that and knows that, but um, I've seen a big difference because I also know people um, who use drugs to get in shape and you see a big change in their feelings so they can be a little bit more uh, uh, upset or angry and you see a big difference. Het is al gauw goed. Rijswafels, of zit er wel een broodje in? Nee, rijswafels, klein beetje kip en dan voor het podium op een chocolaatje.
Is no watch there? Hi. Hey Chloe. Hi hi. Love you. Hey, hey, wie gaat er winnen? Jij? Yes. 2-2. 1 2 op eerste plaats. Hey, ik zie jou straks, ja? Love you. I think he's going to do well. As I said, Rico has a ton of potential and he has all of the tools to be a great bodybuilder. And that has definitely shown itself over the course of working with him. I, I've, I've definitely seen flashes of what he's going to be one day. And already he looks incredibly formidable. But how, how he'll do, it always depends on who's gonna show up. That's that's the hard part about bodybuilding, it being subjective, how the judges see it. But I do believe that, at least right now at the amateur level, no matter what show he walks into, he has a chance at winning that show. That's, that's my genuine belief, is that at the highest level of the amateur levels, he um, can contend in almost any show he walks into. The sport of bodybuilding in general is a very lonely sport. You have to overcome the demons that you are facing with every single day. And the only person that can overcome those things in your head is yourself. Sometimes you forget the amount of support you have from the people around you and you don't see it. But once it is there, once the time is there to get on stage, these people are cheering for you these people are supporting you. And I think this is one of the things we as natural bodybuilders often forget, that our support group is always there for us. To uh, watch Rico on stage was really one of the best moments in my life, because I saw that he really uh, loves it to do so. I saw him smiling from ear to ear. <laughs> and now it looks like he's never happier <laughs> before, but it was, I think it was really the first time that I saw him uh, so happy doing his thing and he was training so hard for it the whole year, so I was so proud. It was a good competition. <laughs> yes, it was. Thank you very much. Just myself. Say hello. 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 <laughs> Martin. Say my Noah. Noah. There was this particular person from Austria that I already was in contact with. He had a great body, he was massive, and I knew that I was going to go against him in the top two, and so we did. The competition of the Dutch championships, I never saw this one coming. There were a lot of good athletes right next to me,
Eventually, I won the competition. But most importantly, it was not about the competition. It was not about winning. It was all about to have my son there, see me do my thing on that very stage. I think Rico's first show went really well. When we went into the first show, we did indeed come in uh, quite a bit leaner than he had in the past. And we came in with a lot more size than he had previously. Going into his second show, we changed the approach a little bit. We did indeed aim to pull up a few more pounds of body fat and get his lower body a little bit sharper. The other thing that we changed was we were very happy with how his peak week went at the first show. He was significantly improved from the beginning of peak week to the end of peak week. But the thing that we noticed is that it took him a little longer to assimilate the carbohydrates. We did a big carbohydrate load. We gave him uh, close to a thousand grams of carbohydrates the day before the show at the first show. But the thing that we noticed is that he tended to fill out over the course of the day. And he actually looked his best by the evening of show day which we wanted him to be um, a little bit fuller by the morning of show day. So going into our second show, we changed the approach a little bit. We were, we were already a little bit leaner, so we were already better than the first show. Going into the second show, our original plan was to carbohydrate load him two days out and then back off. But we actually had to change that plan at the last minute. And the reason for that is because he uh, was going to enter a division that he had to make body weight for. He had to stay under 70 kilograms. And then, uh, off we go to Germany. I'm coming for you. Hey, coach. Um, so my weigh in this morning at the gas station is 69.3. So we're now 700 grams under the uh, maximum weight of 70 kilograms. So uh, let me know what to do. I'm sure Rico was really sick of me bothering him for his body weight, but leading into weighing in, um, we pretty much did a guess and check process. So we would feed him, and we would check how much he weighed, and then we'd wait a couple hours, see how much he weighed again, and then we'd feed him based on that body weight to make sure he stayed under that 70 kilogram mark. The European Championship was a couple of weeks further from the Dutch Championships. We had to lose more weight, become more sharper, because if there's one thing clear, the European Championships in Germany is one of the toughest shows in the world. It meant that I was losing a little bit more weight to come in my best condition ever. And it was very hard, much less food, but you have to keep going with the trainings. There's, there's no other way. At this particular point in time, it doesn't really matter anymore what happens or not. Because you're so focused on the end goal. And it's very hard because your mind is starting to play tricks with your head. That you want that particular cookie that is in front of you. That you want to eat more than you can have. And at this very last few days, weeks, you are pushing the body to the limits it is pushing against your own nature just to get a slight change in your physique. What the people don't see during this prep, eh, what I see as a wife is that he is, was always standing in front of the window in his body build slip, posing before the window or behind the window with his camera on like every Sunday. And in the last week it was like every day and well, that kind of things. Uh, he even went to America to prove his training and to learn how he can train better on a different way. Are you yes, 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 yes. So it's not only the training every day and the food. It was a lot more than that because he was also having a coach in the United States and he was having a lot of contact with him and he was saying exactly what he has to do. So there was more than just training and food. Uh, your whole lifestyle is about that one day that you are there on stage. And 
that's not what the other people see, and that's why I have a lot of respect for the whole sport now. Rico. Rico van Heusen. Heusen. Rico, okay. Dubai was the last one. Dubai is the last one. Now he's back. I'll be back. And now I, and now I have three kids as well. <laughs> Grey hairs. All right. So this was the moment of truth. No drink, no eat. But we are in the athletic class, which is your height minus 103 centimeters. So I was like 172 and a half centimeters. I'm shrinking. I don't know why. But the weight was 68.8. So we are in which means we are going to compete in two classes. We are going to win. David, it's nice to meet you. I have contacted you for the documentary. Ah, um, you remember? Rico, Rico yes. Van yes. He's the only man that uh, made a documentary for Germany in Germany. I, I watched it. Yes. It was good. Thank you. But nice. your documentary gets so many visitors. Yes. On how, how did you make it that so many people watch your documentary? It's just it, it just went like that. I did nothing. It went organic and it went crazy. Excellent. So, where's your running? Two classes? Yep. So, this is a nice... Uh, Sweet little penthouse. Now there was a new class on the European Championships that I was participating in. It was the athletic class. And for this particular class, we had to weigh under a certain amount. And this meant that I couldn't get over this weight or otherwise I was not able to compete in there. This meant that I needed to weigh myself every now and then and update Cliff on where I was at. On this particular moment, Cliff would say to me to eat, not to eat, to drink or not to drink, up until the time that we have stepped on that weighing skill. And then the party started. Oops. No. Potato out of the air fryer. Look at that. Look at that. Damn. So good. So good. It's time to fill out, baby. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Next meal is going to be Schmeck's. Schmeck's home. So we're going to have approximately 80 grams, I guess. Let me double check my fitness pal. 99 grams, ah, even better. And we still need to clear all this water. It's gonna bring us to 9.2 liters. So we have one, three, 12 bottles. That's still six liters to go, yeah. You can already start seeing that the muscle is filling out and the dissection is coming through the triceps you know, and uh, we have to check in with the coach anytime soon. You know, and the guys, the salt is there to drive the carbs into the cells. So that's the reason why we are consistently taking the salt, the sodium and all that stuff. Now we are a couple of hours out from the show, the day before. And because of the strategic changes Cliff Wilson made to my diet, because we had to make weight, we now finally can start eating. The carb up protocol is in full effect. I'm going to eat a lot of carbohydrates and together with that comes a lot of water. Hey Cliff, all right. Um, second to last meal on the schedule. So here's the condition. I think one of the things that Rico really understands compared to a lot of other bodybuilders, he really understands what the pace of this process looks like. What I mean by that is generally when I'm working with competitors, I have to play the game of being a pace setter for them. A lot of times competitors come to me and within two years of picking up a weight, they tell me they want to be a professional bodybuilder. I usually have to 
play the role of limiting their expectations, at least their timelines, because I have to tell them it's not realistic. For some reason, bodybuilders have a hard time accepting that. I don't know why bodybuilding compared to other sports, people have different opinions on that. Most people wouldn't pick up a basketball or pick up a soccer ball and then tell me that they want to be um, a pro within two years. But for some reason, bodybuilders think that they can do that. Rico has a really good understanding of what sort of timelines exist in the sport of natural bodybuilding, and it doesn't scare him away one bit. He, he accepts those timelines, that this is a years long process, and in fact, not only is he not scared about the long timelines and the years of effort that it takes, he seems to actually enjoy it. Any um, physical gifts aside, Rico's enjoyment of the process and his enjoyment of how long it takes is actually one of those intangible gifts that I think um, you really can't coach. So I think this is yet another one of those things that really separates him from other bodybuilders. We have done all the work at this particular point. Now it's to watch the magic happen that Cliff is well known for, the peaking protocol. Everything is done, all the cardio sessions, all the food has been eaten, all the trainings are done. Now it is time for just some enjoyment, extra food coming in. It's let the body do the work to fill out those muscles and especially focus on the next day which is going to be the final show day. I have all my eggs in there. Now. Huh? Look at the guys up. Fuck, man. See ya. What the fuck is this? To have some water with pre workout, some sodium, and some fast acting sugars. Because on stage, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of fuel to keep posing in front of the judges. 20 minutes before the stage, and we can have Reese's peanut butter cups. Man, it's gonna be a feast. It's about time our names has been put out. And down the stairs we go towards the final room. It's the pump up room. Now once you're standing between those 17 men pumping up in that pump up room, for sure, your mind tried to play tricks again. You're looking around you, try to find that one person who has done his homework, who never skipped a training, who never skipped a meal. And you see those guys instantly, shredded glutes, big muscles, great tanning, was going to be a hard, hard competition. So now you're standing between 17 men. The first cut is going to happen, down to the top five placings. Once you made the top five placing, you know you are in it. You are in the final. On that particular moment, nothing else matters. It's you against the four other guys next year. Standing on that stage, everything in front of you is like non-existent. The only thing I can think about is, am I hitting my poses correctly? I literally see like a black blanket in front of me because I'm so focused in that moment, going through the movements, the contractions in the muscle, making sure that the guy right next to me once he is hitting his weak poses, I'm hitting my strong poses. We have won the first show on the European Championships. We became the champion of the class. This is very unrealistic because, as I told you, the Germans have no mercy. It was kind of unexpected. Now that we have won the class, it's now time to go for the overall. And finally the chance that I've been waiting for for 17 years. It's a chance to become a natural pro bodybuilder.
I didn't expect this. So now we have to wait for the other class to uh, finish and then we go to the overall. The first one is inside, baby. Bam! On this very moment, I'm thinking about everything. I'm thinking about the road that we have done so far. We have won the Dutch Championships, we have won the European Championships. But there's this one thing, the pro card. And we are waiting for our name to be announced, to come on stage and fight for it. In the time that I'm walking on my own, I'm getting these flashbacks. I'm seeing my kids, the long period of time that I could not have eaten with them, the amount of times that I had to say no instead of yes. But it was also the time and the moment to get what I've worked so long for. 17 years, and it's the time to get that pro card. It's to show my kids that no matter what, you can achieve whatever you want to achieve if you put in the effort and the time and go all in for 100%. We have done it. The pro card is achieved. The long hours of work, trainings, diet is over. The big prize is fulfilled. <laughs> it was with his mother and the children and we were like yelling and screaming because we never thought that he would win the European uh, prize as well. Because there were a lot of big guys there. So it was really nice. No matter what in your life, if you push through this, you can achieve whatever you want to achieve. You can show your kids what can be done. And I think this is one of the best lessons you can give them. In the end, it was not about the competition. It was not about winning. And it was not about the pro card. It was all about showing myself, my family, and my kids, that whatever you want to achieve, you can do it. The sky's the limit. And that's exactly what I showed them. I lead by example, I showed them the way. Now, it's up to them. Finally, we made it. The job is done. Let's enjoy it. Just, just the garlic bread. Just having salad with dressing or sauce is already good. Thank you. Wow. Let's take a to this. I don't know where to start. already starting bro, it's already starting. Wait, wait till I finish this food. Explosion. It's pretty lean meat, so that's a, it's like a diet.
finished all the plates, folks. It was a crazy day. It was a crazy road. The journey was crazy. It's been a long time. And, you know, everything has been such amazing. The, the organizations today, um, the whole road. Me having kids with my girlfriend, wife, for the first time, never competed with anything around me. This was the first time, and three kids, and a wife, and a dog, whatever. Totally different lives, and we still get it done, and we still got the comeback. So, we eventually finished this Greek godness. It has been amazing. We finished a lot of food. I'm actually done. We are not getting into the dessert. Got on many plates. Yeah, I freaking feel like Mr. Olympia, man. Oh, I'm going to explode. In my opinion, Rico has the ability to... I genuinely think he could eventually be one of the best lightweight bodybuilders in the entire world. There's, there's no doubt about that in my mind. What Rico's doing right here and trying to inspire the uh, natural bodybuilding world. I think that it's amazing. I think we need more of this. Bodybuilders tend to be a really secretive bunch. They don't like to share their secrets. They don't like to share their tactics. They don't like to share their approaches. And I think that the more people can document what they're doing and it will give an insight, especially to the younger bodybuilders just making their way into this game. I think that it will attract more people to the sport and we really need that. It's fantastic what he's doing here and I think we need more of it really. If Rico will ask me to do another championship, of course, I will uh, say, let's do it, because I really liked it. Uh, for him, uh, I saw that he really enjoyed the whole year. It was not only the contest that he liked, but also the, the preparing. So yes, if he is going to ask or tell me, because he, he should not ask me and he won't ask me, he will do it, because that's that's what Rico do, then I will just say yes and I will support him. We did what we set out to do. Uh, we, we got the pro card and we made significant improvements uh, from the last time he competed. And now, now it's just a matter of going into the off season and getting bigger and getting better and doing it all over again.